Okay. Okay. So I'll call this study session to order. Correct? We need to call it to order. Um, Thursday, February 9th at 6.34 p.m. On the uh, study session tonight, we'll be reviewing our social service subgrants. Yes, we'll do roll call. Commissioner Malcolm. Commissioner Dooley. Here. Commissioner Coluccio. Here. Commissioner Russell. Present. Vice Chair Naylor. Here. And Chairperson Yoshikawa. Here. Thank you. Rocker just showed up. Oh. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> Here. <laughs> Commissioner Brocker, here. <laughs> okay, great. Um, oh, thank you. Wow, much better. Okay, are there any oral requests? Nope, okay. We'll go to new business, social service subgrants, and we'll leave it to Tina er uh, Wong Erling to walk us through all the applicants. Uh, good evening, Chair Yoshikawa and members of the Civic Improvement Commission. It's nice to see you all. Uh, so again, Tina Longerling, Senior Services Supervisor, and I'm pleased to review the applications that we've received for the um, uh, fiscal year 2024 and 2025 um, social service subgrants. So just some background um, about the subgrant, uh, social service subgrants. The funding um, supports agencies that provide services um, not already provided by the city of, of Campbell. Um, as the lead advisory body to the City Council on Social Services, the Civic Improvement Commission is responsible for making recommendations to City Council on allocating the city's social service subgrant funds to qualified social service agencies via a competitive process. The social service subgrants are issued on a two-year funding cycle. Uh, this, this, for this particular cycle, we've received seven applications that I believe you received in your packet. Um, the total anticipated funding amount for each of these uh, fiscal years, 24 and 25, is 55000 and the total funding requests we've received for each of these years um, is 79000 500, and I believe um, Diana Johnson provided a, a revised um, proposal for one of the applicants. So the original um, uh, matrix that you received uh, totaled 122,000, so in effect it is now 79,500. The purpose of the study session this evening is an opportunity for the, for the commission to conduct an initial review. Um, and discuss the applications, um, and I will be providing an overview, but I'd like to take this opportunity to, um, to uh, welcome the agencies uh, that are with us this evening. Uh, we have uh, representatives from St. Lucie's, St. Vincent de Paul. We have a representative from uh, Cassie, and I believe via Zoom, we do have a representative from Senior Adults Legal Assistance, uh, known, also known as SALA. So I'd like to thank them for being here. So before we get started on reviewing the applications, uh, in your packet, we received um, a matrix on um, the, the client information that uh, the current grantees uh, provided for fiscal year 22 and 20 and partially for 23. So uh, again, what you have before you is is in, or is or data that was submitted on the annual basis. That's uh, a requirement of, of the grant. Um, and then you have a uh, half year for fiscal year 23. Any questions that you may have regarding this information could be uh, posed to agencies that are with us this evening or at the public hearing on March 9th. My first question is, we don't have the one that says 79.5, so we have to, we wrote that in. So which uh, of, this, of these columns changed to make it 
Sure. So the proposal from Counseling and Support Services for Youth, um, also known as CALSI, has revised their proposal to $7,500, $7,500, instead of the $50,000 that you received in your packet. Right. Okay, so that, got it. Thank you. Thank you. And that's for both years? Correct. And then on the FY23, you said the sixth day of half a year. Is that right? That, that is correct. Already approved and budgeted. Yes, the funding is budgeted through um, June of this year, which is fiscal year 23. So as we're reviewing applications this evening, Jose will record um, any questions that you have. And, uh, and again, we'll make certain that these questions are, um, are either responded uh, this evening by agencies that are present or, um, again, at the March 9th um, public hearing. Okay, so we'll get started with our proposals if uh, the Commission does not have any further questions at this point. Okay, so first, uh, first proposal that I will be reviewing this evening is from Catholic Charities. Uh, they submitted a proposal. They are a current um, social service subgrantee. Uh, their proposal is, through, is, is for their long-term care ombudsman program. Uh, the long-term care ombudsman program advocates for frail elderly by resolving problems in long-term care facilities. Federal and state laws mandate that ombudsmen are, uh, ombudsmen are available to elderly residents of long-term care facilities in order to ensure uh, care provided meets uh, required minimum standards. So the ombudsman in a, in a skilled nursing facility is, is synonymous with adult, protect, adult protective services to, to um, elders who don't live in, in facilities. Uh, Catholic Charities is currently funded by the city for $6,000 in the current um, cycle. The funding request is for $10,000, uh, which uh, is an increase of $4,000. The funding provides site visits to 17 long-term care facilities in Campbell to observe and monitor conditions of care. The proposed total duplicated uh, clients served is 55 clients here in Campbell. Any questions about the Catholic Charities Long-Term Care Ombudsman Program? Okay, next is um, the Health Trust. The Health Trust is the only program in the county that provides hot home-delivered meals to homebound seniors age 60 plus on a daily basis. The goal of the Meals on Wheels program is to provide the health and well-being of seniors who are homebound and low income by providing home delivered meals and social visits with, with wellness checks. The Health Trust is currently funded for $13,500. The funding requests for the next two fiscal years is $24,000 each year. Um, for the uh, dollar amount that they're proposing, they will serve 32 clients in fiscal year 24 and 34 clients in fiscal year 25. I have a question on this one. Um, they're asking for almost double the budget, about 80% increase, but the number of people that they're increasing by is two or four. So my question is, that's going up by less than 10%, but they're asking for 80% increase. So I would wonder why, why such a bit, there should be some justification, at least in my mind. And these are all questions that we take, sir. Any of the questions are typically um, answered either at the public hearing or through the agencies via email or whatever. It's um, that's why he's recording them all, just especially for the new commissioners. Um, we don't really discuss and have all these you know questions amongst ourselves and answers amongst ourselves. So we just need to ask the questions, and then they will be answered for us, just for clarification, right? Okay. But questions are okay. Questions are fine. Okay, I, just, okay, I yes. just didn't want you oh, to, yes. to like. No, I didn't expect necessarily. Okay. Yeah. No, I just wanted to make 
to me, that was, that was, I don't want to say a red flag, but it stood out to me. So I uh, believe Jose has noted that question for the health trust and um, staff will be sure to follow up. Okay, so next is Live Oak Adult Day Services. Live Oak Adult Day Services provides a specialized program of adult daycare for dependent seniors age 60 plus who suffer from various cognitive and or physical impairments. They have four centers located in Santa Clara County. The program uh, supports keeping seniors at home by providing respite, also known as relief care, for families and caregivers. Uh, Live Oak is currently funded for $7,000. That is the same amount um, of the requests for fiscal year 24 and 25. And the proposal um, would serve seven clients um, each respectively in fiscal year 24 and 25. Any questions for Live Oak? So a question that I have is, I don't see that's outrageous. I mean, $1,000 a person is not necessarily expensive. My question is, this funding is coming from, this, this organization is located in San Jose, but it's being funded by Campbell, Cupertino, Gilroy, Sunnyvale, Santa Clara, Los Gatos, and not by San Jose. Just, just curious why that would be. So can, can I just make certain that we capture the, the question correctly? Um, so your, your question is, um, you, you've noticed that there, this agency is funded by multiple municipalities, but not the city of San Jose. Right, not where it's located. Not where it's located, yeah. okay. Okay, so noted. Any other questions about Live Oak? Okay. I had one other question on the um, seven individuals. Do they, is that like full time? Like, is it five days a week or um, maybe it said it. I don't think it's gave the specific hours, but I know it's like a daytime. Um, but I was just curious is the, what that typically is in a week or the number of hours that these seniors are, are receiving the care. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Anything else on Live Oak? Okay, next we have Nextdoor Solutions. Nextdoor Solutions serves victims and survivors of domestic violence and their children with three core programs that assist the client in addressing crisis and transition to safety, stability, and self-sufficiency. These three programs are community and systems advocacy, support groups, and self-sufficiency program. Next door is currently funded by the city for $4,000. That is the same amount as the request for fiscal year 24 and 25. Uh, for the $4,000, they are proposing to serve 60 Campbell clients. Any questions or comments for next door? Okay, so I'll move along to Senior Adult Legal Assistance, also known as SALA. SALA provides free legal services to Campbell seniors age 60, primarily by phone, um, uh, during the pandemic and post-COVID at the Campbell Adult Center, by telephone, or also home visits. In-person um, appointments were reinstated at the adult center uh, last month, January of 2023. And I just wanted to note that we are currently booked through March. Services will be targeted to seniors with low income or those who are at risk of abuse, isolation, institutionalization. SALA specializes in public benefits, housing, elder abuse, advanced healthcare directives, and simple wills. SALA is currently funded um, for $11,000, and their funding requests for fiscal year 24 and 25 is $12,000. Uh, under this proposal, SALA would provide services to 20 Campbell clients in fiscal year 24 and 25.
any questions regarding Sala's proposal? Okay, moving right along. Uh, next is St. Lucie Conference Office of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. Uh, this program provides food, emergency, rental, and utility assistance uh, to those in need with an emphasis since the pandemic to prevent homelessness. Funds from the City of Campbell will be used to provide rental or utility assistance or food vouchers for Campbell residents. Uh, they're currently funded for $13,500. Um, their funding request is for $15,000 for fiscal year 24 and 25, uh, which is an increase of $15,000. Uh, excuse me, pardon me, $1,500. Um, under this proposal, they would serve 70 Campbell clients in fiscal year 24 and 25. Any questions or comments of, uh, regarding their proposal? No. And we do have two representatives uh, representatives here from their agency tonight. Thank them for being here. Okay, and lastly, we have a new applicant. Mm -hmm. Um, we received a proposal from Counseling and Support Services for Youth, also known as Cassie. We have their Executive Director, Mariko, here with us this evening. Cassie partners with the Campbell Union High School District to provide professional mental health services to students ages 14 to 18 in their academic setting. Uh, again, they are a new agency, so they're not currently funded by Campbell. Their funding request is $7,500 for fiscal year 24 and 25. Under this proposal, they are um, they would serve 162 Campbell clients. The only thing that changed was the first page. And so that's all I gave you for the packet. And this was not changed because it was posted. And once we posted, I couldn't change it. Mm -hmm. So that's why it reflected what was actually posted, the, the matrix. Under the um, eligibility criteria, um, so they have to be enrolled in the Campbell Union High School District. So there, it's just, it's high school only. And is there, there's no, I assume they'd be 14 to 18, 19. Okay. Um, so is the commission wanting clarification regarding um, the enrollment in school versus residency in Campbell? Well, I was just wondering on the numbers, um, I think we said 162 cl um, clients on the estimate, but that also includes um, the enrolled students, their parents, caregivers, and school staff. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? That that, that comprises the 162. Good evening, I'm Marika Saig with Cassie. Thank you. 162, that's students only. So I did not include uh, the parents or the caregivers or any siblings. Thank you. You're welcome. So, excuse me, in the number, the total number is roughly 850. And I'm assuming that's throughout the valley. No, that's 800 for Campbell Union High School mm -hmm. District students. And because the districts support students that live in Campbell, San Jose, Los Gatos, and Saratoga, oh. what I did was I actually took the number, I looked at the residents, mm -hmm. and that's how I came to the 162. And that historically is always about uh, the same numbers that we've been serving since 2015. 
this organization serves other cities as well, correct? That's correct. Okay. We're in San so, Mateo. And so Santa this Clara. is a percentage, the, the number you're asking for is the percentage to cover Campbell Union. Correct. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. So at this time, the, does the commission have any additional questions or comments regarding any of the applications that we've reviewed? Okay, so the next step in this process is, oh, pardon me. Sorry, I, I thought of one I wanted to ask for about next door. Um, I guess I'd like to ask them specifically to address any changes to their organizations that they perceive specifically due to COVID just over the last couple of years. So I didn't, I, I saw, I, I mean, it was good information as always from them, but I was hoping to see specifically if there was anything they were addressing in regards to that. Okay. Okay, if there are no further questions, the next step in the process is the first public hearing that will be held as a part of the regular Civic Improvement Commission um, meeting um, on March 9th at 7.30 um, p.m., where the agencies will be requested to make a presentation um, of their proposals. And, um, and there'll be, um, we will reach out and, and share the questions um, if they weren't addressed this evening and, and to ensure that, that uh, they're either responded during their presentation or prior to, to the next meeting. Great, thank you, Tina. Um, if there are no other questions or comments, I think we can adjourn the study session and then we'll meet back in 30 minutes in the chambers here for the regular Civic Improvement Commission meeting. Meetings adjourned at 656 or sorry the study sessions adjourned at 656. Thank you.